a group of individuals who had formed a small village up in the Alaskan mountains in the sub-Arctic temperatures of those regions and those mountains. And they were stuck up there, and there was no way to get to them by any type of transportation except for walking. There was no way to get a dog sled up there, no way to get a Jeep up there or an all-terrain vehicle of any kind, no way because of the, the way the wind was to get a helicopter and definitely no way to land an airplane up there where they were. But they had several sick, they had received word, several sick people who needed vaccines and medicine in that camp. And they sent out uh, and uh, took three of what they thought was their best men and uh, they packed them up and sent them, got them just as close as they could and sent them up that mountain and over that rugged terrain, uh, cold and freezing and stormy. And uh, they were about five or six days from getting there. And uh, the three men would camp every night and uh, come the second night, it was so cold that one of those men said, I cannot go any further. I, I can't go any further. And believe it or not, that next morning, he was dead. He gave up. He couldn't go any further, and in his mind, he couldn't go any further, so he gave up. Two days later, on this seven-day trip, two days later, another man in the expedition said, I cannot go any further. The other man said, yeah, you can, man. you got to go. And he said, I cannot go any further. And in the night, because he'd given up his will to live, he died that exact night. Three days later, the story goes that those uh, individuals who were up in that mountain needed help. They looked out across that sunset, and they looked, and they saw a shadow of a man as he was literally crawling on his hands and knees with that backpack on his back full of medicine. And they got him all the way in there, and he had frostbite in his hands. His nose had frostbite. He eventually lost it all as far as his extremities. But he got the medicine there, and the news report read, a man makes up his mind he had to make it. And they asked him, how did you do it? He said, because when I started out, I made up in my mind, I was going all the way. <laughs> you ain't getting that right here. Hallelujah. But I made up in my mind, I'm going all the way. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. The book of 2 Kings tonight, 2 Kings chapter number 6. Thank you for everything. Once again, thank you for letting us stay over in the Bethel Hilton Hotel. We appreciate that. May God bless you. And uh, we are so uh, appreciative of the food that was bought today. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for all the kind words and accolades that have been given to us. Thank you also for everyone who uh, been a, was a part of, once again, a part of the wedding. And uh, thank you for everyone who came. Thank you for everyone who uh, gave. Uh, we received an church from the, uh, offering from the church, a special offering from the church, and many of you gave towards that, and we appreciate that so much. And also some of you gave uh, special gifts, and we appreciate that so much as well. We hope and pray that God will bless you for it. Sister uh, Stephanie and I are so glad that we have met you all and so glad we've come to, your, uh, to the acquaintance, and we're glad that the friendship is continuing. Praise the Lord. Little Chris, good to see you, man. Hallelujah. We've been praying for you. Praise God. God's got a plan. Uh, in the middle of this uh, scripture here tonight that I'm about to read, there's going to be a time when you're going to be very familiar with it and your eyes are going to glaze over. But I don't want you to do that, okay? It's Sunday night. You had a good Sunday lunch. You may have even had supper before you come. It's winding on down. You got your mind on tomorrow already about what you're going to do when you get up in the morning, what kind of stuff you got to face tomorrow at work. But here for just a few more minutes, would you listen to the word of God tonight? Would you, I got two people. How about some more? Hallelujah. Stand, if you will, for the reading of God's word tonight. Praise the Lord. Second Kings tonight, chapter number 6. Second Kings 6. Thank you also for the response we received this morning. The altars were full. And then afterwards, several come to us and said how much they appreciated the message and the spirit of God moving this morning. And I appreciate the Holy Ghost. Don't you? I appreciate the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's what makes the difference in service. 2 Kings 6 and verse 1, if you have it, would you say amen? amen. And the son of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Bunch of wimps. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam. 
and let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, go ahead. Oh, that's not King James Version. I'm sorry. <laughs> and he answered, go ye. In other words, you go do that. Oh, but listen to verse 3. And one said, the smart one out the bunch, be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. I love the preeminence, and I'm not through reading here, but I love the preeminence and the respect and the honor that these men of God who are preachers, sons of prophets, preachers, and young men in the ministry, how much respect they had for the man of God, that they literally did not want to even start a building program unless he was with them. That's how much respect they had for the man of God, and they felt like they wouldn't be in the will of God without a leader. Amen. Verse 4, so he went with them, and when they come to Jordan, they cut down wood. That's what you build houses with, praise God. But as for one, I'm oh, sorry, but as one was felling a beam, cutting it down, the axe head fell into the water. You get that? He was cutting that beam down, and the axe head flew off at some point and fell into the water. We don't know if it slipped off or if it broke off. But it's off now. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And he cried, middle of verse 3, and, or middle of verse 5, and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it in thither. And notice this. The iron did swim. What he thought was lost and impossible to recover rose to the surface. Verse number 7. Therefore said he, take it up thee. And he put out his hand and he took it. Praise the Lord. With the help of the Lord tonight, I'm going to preach, and we're going to help me pray here in just a minute because we really need the Lord to touch us tonight. With the help of the Lord, I'm going to preach on polished handles. Polished handles. Stretch your hands this way. Ask the Lord sincerely to help us right here tonight in this service. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I stand before these people with just lips of clay. Lord, I stand before them just a man. Unless your spirit breathe into me, God, the very word of life, that you would help me, I pray. Father, that you would anoint my words, God. Anoint what I say right here. Lord, lead me, I pray, in what to say and what not to say. God, give me the sermon of the thoughts and hearts and intentions of these people. Let your Holy Ghost Spirit work amongst us. Give us the gifts of the Spirit right here. Lord, hide me behind the cross of Christ. Lord, let it be as apples of gold and pictures of silver. Lord, let everything be fitly spoken and framed together according to your will. Cast out hell and bring up heaven in its place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the church said, Amen. Once again, if you would, if you, before you see, to turn around, shake somebody's hand. Tell them it's good to see them in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Fellowship for just a few seconds there. Tell them it's good to see them. Praise the Lord. Good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. Especially glad to see Sister Anderson and Brother uh, Lloyd with us. Appreciate them being here and uh, so many others. I am. Uh, I'm, I told them that day at lunch, I'm still learning names. And so if I call you something, Sister Stephanie's definitely still learning names. And uh, she said, isn't that Brother David Russell up there? And I said, no, that's the Russells out there, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, but anyways, we're still learning names, but we're, we're appreciative of everybody. Thank you. And I, I should know more than what I do, but I'm just bad about that, and I need to be better. Um, but I, if I call you sis or brother, don't get offended. Just be glad I called you that instead of something else. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. But we appreciate everybody. Thank you for being here. And uh, we love the Lord tonight. The book of uh, 2 Kings gives us the word of God as it is inscribed. And we know that the word of God is divided into sections. It is not in chronological order, although you can read it in chronological order. I'm sure there are several different outlines online and in commentaries that will tell you how things are written and what they're written for. Uh, the word of God is not written in chron chronology e in either the New Testament or the Old Testament. 
Uh, if, that were, if that were to be so, uh, then we probably would have some of the letters and such uh, that happened before the book of Acts. But we couldn't understand the letters unless we understood the book of Acts. Because the book of Acts was written afterwards. We know that. It's a history written by Luke and from memory, most of it. Uh, but the word of God is not divided into chronological order. The word of God is divided into order by subject. You have the first five books of the, of the word of God, which are the law. We know you have the first four Gospels of the New Testament, which are the history of Jesus Christ and what he said and did. In every section, you have the major prophets, the minor prophets, you have the songs and proverbs, and you have the histories. The histories, which is uh, Joshua, and we have Nehemiah, and you have the major prophets, and you have 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, and all those other things. But we drop here now into the history of Israel. We know Israel is divided into two kingdoms eventually uh, after David's reign, and, and we'll get there in a little bit. But right now, we're into the prophets that are ministering unto Israel and ministering to these kings that have gone astray. And we know uh, what's going on here. This is Elisha. This is the understudy of Elijah. And we know that his main goal, or when Elijah went by and dropped the mantle on his shoulders and kept walking, uh, we know from that point forward it was Elisha's goal to have a double portion of what Elijah had. And we know that it was just one time Elisha saw him done one thing and he knew that he had to have Help me, Holy Ghost. He had to have uh, what that man of God had. What kind of testimony are you leading out in this world uh, when somebody wants what you got? <laughs> they don't just want what you got. They want more of what you got. Praise the Lord. Oh, yes, but Elisha's there, and we know Elijah told him, Many times he said, if you'll see me when I'm going up, where I'm taking up, uh, you will uh, receive the mantle uh, and you'll receive a double portion. Uh, and if you've ever done a specific study on Elisha's life, uh, there are exactly twice as many miracles done by Elisha as there were by Elijah. Actually, there was one less uh, until they threw the dead men on Elisha's bones. Uh, and that made the exact duplicate double of the amount uh, of victories uh, and things that happen in Elisha's life to Elijah's life. But right here, we have Elisha in the middle of his ministry. Right here, we have Elisha as he is just healed Naaman. We have Elisha as he is just refused a gift from Naaman. We have him and we know that he punishes Gehazi. Oh my, what preaching can be done right there as he punished Gehazi for his lying tongue and for lying to the man of God. Oh yes, but now he's here and he's with the prophets and he knows what's going on and these men, as I've already said, are desiring. They say it's too hard for us and too straight for us to go with you. Uh, I don't know all the details of this, but I do know they're desiring a place to lodge. And Elisha really didn't have a place to lodge. We know that. He was a prophet and he lodged where he wanted to lodge at uh, and where God provided a way. If that was a rock beside the road uh, or a nice house somewhere where they put him up, uh, he lodged there. But they said we can't handle that, uh, so we've got to have a place to stay. So he said, okay, if you want that, I'll be with you and I'll help you build a house. And they're building this house, building this place, building this place where they would pray, building this place where God would meet with them, building this place where they would dwell. And right here, the Bible tells us they begin to cut down trees. Yeah. They begin to cut down trees and cut down things and, and they begin to fall, fell beams and fell great trees. And something happens. Something happens that I think we lose count of sometimes. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been recorded in the book of 2 Kings. The Bible says an axe head falls off. We're living in a day and age where people are, uh, in, in so many words, not paying attention to the Word of God. We read it, but we don't pay attention to it. Uh, my pastor said many times, and I say it right here, and I'll, I've said it many times at the church, uh, when's the last time we put down the commentary and picked up the Word of God and said, what does Jesus say about this? You can say amen right there. Oh, yes, and I, I, I want to go back to what I said this morning. Uh, preaching is of no avail unless the Word of God touches our hearts. And I told Sister Smith today after lunch, and she was mentioning to me about what I said this morning, and I'm going to tell you, uh, you can only be touched uh, unless your, if your heart uh, is open to the Word of God. 
Did you hear me? I, I said you can only be touched and changed by the Word of God if you're open to it. If you're closed to it, it'll just be knocking on the door. If you're closed to it, you won't do anything about it. But the Word of God is meant to change us. Somebody say amen right there. The Word of God is meant to morph us. The Word of God is meant to evolve us to be more like Christ. And we're living in a modern day wholeness church. I'm not dealing with the Baptist church down the road, or the Methodist church across the way, or the Charismatics down there. I'm dealing with the wholeness church tonight. And we're in a modern day society of the wholeness church that says, don't talk to me about my life. My testimony is for me and for nobody else. It doesn't matter what you say. As long as I don't feel bad doing it, it's okay. I've even heard them say just because it's preached in a pulpit doesn't mean that I have to do it. Oh, come on here now. Somebody help me. Praise the Lord. But if it is the word of God, I said if it is the word of God, we ought to listen to it. Amen. If it's the word of God, we ought to obey it. If it's the word of God fitly spoken, if it's the word of God spoken with anointing, we ought to hear it and be doers, not just hearers of the word of God. Praise the Lord. If you want to define yourself away from the modern day church age, begin to do what the word says and don't just read it. Begin to actually listen to what the preacher is preaching instead of just saying amen every time the second hand moves three times. Could I tell you right here, if we would listen to the word of God, it would change our lives. If we would listen to what the preacher says, it would really get in our souls and get down in our hearts. It used to be that we would take notes. It used to be that we remember things. But you ask them on Sunday afternoon out of the church service and they can't even tell you the title of the message anymore. But could I tell you that is not God's will. He, wrote, he chose, the Bible says, the foolishness of preaching to speak to the hearts of men and women. And I want to be a Christian that listens to the word, that obeys the word, that listens to the man of God and does what the man of God says. When the man of God stands behind a pulpit, when the pastor stands behind the pulpit, when the Holy Ghost speaks, it is speaking to our hearts. I said it is speaking to our hearts. Hallelujah. You can brush it off if you want to. You can say that's for somebody else if you want to. But you're not fulfilling the word of God. Paul wrote to Timothy and he said, and all these things, he said, rebuke. What else did he say? Exhort. What else did he say? And reprove. Reprove and rebuke, both of those are negative things. Exhort is a positive thing. So two-thirds of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the gospel of Paul the apostle was negative. But yet we get so negative on the preacher when he gets negative on us. You can say amen or owe me whatever you want. Come on, preach it anyways. Oh, yes, I told you this morning, and I'm right back here tonight again. Away with this cotton candy preaching. Away with this sweet stuff that says I'm okay. Preacher, tell me how to change. Preacher, tell me what I need to do to get closer to God. Tell me what I need to do to reach my family. Tell me what I need to do to do the word and to have revival in my church. Hallelujah. We've had enough cotton candy. We've had enough sweets, praise God. Sweets will satiate a hunger, but it won't fill you up. And I'm going to say it again because I feel like I said it too fast this morning. Sweet stuff will rot your teeth out where you can't chew on the meat of God's word. Hallelujah. I said you won't be able to chew on the meat of God's word. Hallelujah. We're living in a day and age in the holiness church. Because when you say the modern day church age, everybody thinks you're thinking about talking about somebody else. But in the modern day church, we're living under what I call spiritual snowflakes. Anybody know what a snowflake is? We don't get them much down here in, in North Florida, do we? Or in South Georgia. Praise God. Snowflakes. Snowflakes are those little flurries. Uh, we got them here a while back. I got a picture on my phone of my house there. Just Stephanie and I lived there back before we got married, back uh, in the winter months. It come almost three inches, three inches in South Georgia. Blew my mind, man. It was snow. There was snow on the ground for three days. I never seen that in my life. <laughs> That's amazing to me, brother. 
let me just throw this in here. And you still believe global warming. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Hey, man. Come on here now. Praise God. If you don't like it, talk to me after service and I'll prove it to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. But when you move into the word snowflake, if you hold a snowflake, you can't hold it for very long because the atmosphere in a snowflake has to be just right for it to form and just right for it to maintain its form. And my body temperature, especially mine, so stuff is a little more cold natured. Somebody asked, have y'all had y'all's first fuss yet or first fight? I said, first of all, it's not the will of God that Christians fight in the home. Oh, come on here now. We may disagree. We may have to have a little discussion. But screaming, yelling, throwing pots and pans is not the way a Christian holds a discussion. Getting red-faced and screaming, that's not going to solve anything. I ain't been, oh, come on here now. I've been saved 24, uh, 22 years, uh, but I ain't been married uh, but about 30 days. Uh, and even I know that. Hallelujah. That's not going to solve anything. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Lord. Snowflake. The only little spat, not spat, the only disagreement, continuing disagreement we have is she wants it on 72, and I want it on 69. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about? No, and she'll say, what do you want it on? 78. She wants it on 78. She works for a power company, and somewhere down the line, they got some information that if you'll set it on 78, you'll save money. I said, we're going to pay some money then, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll pay that out of my own pocket, praise the Lord. Although our finance together, I'll find some way. I'll pick up Coke cans on the side of the road. It don't matter. I'll give some, some kind of money to keep it cool. Now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, my snowflakes. You can't hold them before they disappear. Spiritual snowflakes. We're living in a modern day church age uh, in the wholeness church full uh, of spiritual snowflakes. Uh, and and, and I, I looked it up because the word snowflake has also become a, a, a political term. And, and that's where I got this idea from. And I began to look around. I said, man, snowflakes are just not out in the political uh, 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 arena. They're in the spiritual arena. Oh, yes. And I looked this up and it's come right from a dictionary that was formulated on the word snowflake. Inflated sense of their own value they have an inflated sense of their own value i'm gonna get back to elisha in a minute i know some of you are wishing i'd get back there a lot quicker but i'm gonna get there in a minute uh, spiritual snowflakes have an inflated sense uh, of their own uh, self-value they are easily offended and they are unable to deal with other views or opinions. And when confronted with the facts, they are unwilling to change no matter what. Mm. Keep your eyes up here. Don't look around the room here. Keep your eyes up here. Don't look around. Uh, that spiritual snowflake can't handle you looking at them right now because I'm on their row uh, and they can't handle it right now. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, we got spiritual snowflakes uh, in the house of God. Uh, we got people uh, who are offended by everything uh, and never satisfied by anything. Uh, could I tell you right here, uh, spiritual snowflakes, uh, when they hear the word of God, uh, they don't do the word of God. Uh, they just say amen, good word. Uh, but could I tell you that is it's not the will of God. I said that is not the will of God. A spiritual snowflake wants you to preach the word, but don't you dare enforce it. Especially on my grandbabies. If it was wrong for your daughter and your son to do it, it's wrong for your grandchildren to do it. Oh, come on here now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Uh, a spiritual snowflake wants you to follow the Spirit uh, until you begin knocking on their door, uh, and then you're in the flesh. Uh, come on here now. Well, now he's pandering. Now he's meddling. Y'all use that word down here? Praise the God. Uh, sister, you said y'all use that term, if it be the Lord's will. How do you say that down here? How, how do you say y'all say that down here? If the Lord is willing. In South Georgia, we have a way of shortening things up. Uh, we shorten up you all to y'all. Y'all do down here, don't you? Yeah. So we shorten that up down up there in South Georgia, and we say, Lord willing. Lord willing, we'd be there. And some of them will say, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. 
Y'all know what I'm talking about there, don't you? <laughs> Praise the Lord, especially right here. You know, it's the coast. Lord willing, the tide don't rise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But look right here. Oh, yes. They say you're meddling when you get too much on the road. They say you're not so. Oh, yes. And what's wrong with smiling a little bit while somebody's preaching? Come on here now. What's wrong with enjoying the word of God? What's wrong with enjoying what the man of God has to say? Nothing at all. I said nothing at all. We ought to listen. We ought to obey. And we ought to enjoy the word that is given to us. Praise the Lord. Oh yes, I got a few more here. I wrote, I jotted these down. Oh yes, they'll shout the victory and get offended when somebody doesn't shake their hand. Well, they're the most spiritual person until somebody don't shake their hand. And then they're a pouty-faced, spoiled brat. Come on here now. Oh, yes. I was uh, privy to a service one time when a brother, uh, several years ago, when you had a baby, for I understand, they would give you a big baby bottle savings bank thing. I don't know what it's called, but it's a big old bottle about this big. Y'all ever seen one of them things? You put money into it, and that preacher preached that night, and he held that thing, and he was preaching in a church service that he'd never been in. He was evangelizing, and every once in a while, just for, out of just, for whatever reason, he would hand that bottle to somebody, and he'd say, suckle that, and he'd go to preaching for a minute. Not mean anything by it, and the pastor liked to fell out, because everybody he handed it to was one that was been sucking on a bottle. Could I I tell you right here, I don't mind giving people the milk of the word of God when I had to part your whiskers. When I had to part your whiskers to give you the bottle. Something's wrong. I said something's wrong. You're a spiritual snowflake. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They will ask of God to help them with their problem. But never ask God, why am I in this problem? Because sometimes problems are there to make us stronger. It's always, oh, poor, pitiful me. Oh, poor, pitiful us. Oh, yes. There are some spiritual snowflakes, and I'm going to knock on home right here for just a minute here. And y'all want you to say amen to this right here, if you will. Even if you don't agree with it, I want you to say amen, because I want you to make me feel better about it. Hallelujah. There are some people, I've seen them, and it's sad. But they will walk in the house of God, brother, and they'll live a holy lifestyle. They'll walk outside the house of God and they'll live a holy lifestyle. They'll teach it like it's supposed to be taught. By the way, <laughs> holiness is not hard. <laughs> Living a holy lifestyle is not a hard thing to do, but it's also... <laughs> Not me being hard on somebody else. Y'all, sinners going to sin. Y'all hear me? Sinners are going to sin. That's their nature. Now, when you're sinning, that's a different thing. Because they're the nature problem. You look over there and you see that big old, uh, the largest land-walking mammal, largest cons herb, herb consuming a mammal called an elephant with those big old floppy ears and that long old nose can consume uh, several hundred pounds of foliage uh, in, a, in a day uh, and several hundred pounds of water in a day. Uh, and he's over there gnawing uh, on a bone. Something's wrong. I said something's wrong something is wrong there oh yes let me tell you this right here and I'm going to go back to what I said just a minute ago oh yes they will live holy before their family they'll live holy before their church folks they'll pray every day but when they get their family who's lost in the house of God they want everybody to just walk on eggshells around them your family does not need to see a dry service at Bethel Holiness Church. When you bring your family in and you duck your head when the preacher's preaching holiness because you don't want them to be offended, they're going to hell anyways. They might as well hear the word of God. Come on here now. What brought you in? A dead, dry service or somebody preaching the word? 
Oh, hallelujah. Somebody smile at me right now. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, what brought you in? Uh, everybody being quiet and nice to you or somebody saying, you know what? I love you, uh, but God doesn't like how you're living. Uh, and they said it in love. Uh, and they said it in sound doctrine. Uh, oh, some of you are quieting down on me right here. But can I tell you, uh, the word of God will not return void. Uh, I said the word of God will not uh, return void. Uh, and if they walk out of here uh, and never turn their heart to God, uh, I want them to know uh, that they heard the word. Uh, that they heard heard what God said and they heard what the will of God was for their life Amen. spiritual snowflakes spiritual snowflakes the Bible says and I quoted this morning I went back this afternoon because the spirit of God was dealing with me about this and I found in the word of God where Jesus said Matthew 15 and 8 these people or this people he said over here in Matthew this people uh, draw nigh to me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips but their hearts are far from me we're in that holiness day. We're in that church of Laodicea. We're in that lukewarm stage. Oh, yes. Many people have tried to, to uh, idealize what those churches mean. Some people have said it's still regional. And that we are, we are Laodicea because we're the American church. And other churches across the world are different other kind of churches. I don't believe that. I, I, I can prove that it might be that, but I don't believe that. Some people said that the churches uh, were simply who John was talking to or the Lord, Lord was talking to through John and those churches are passed away and we're just to learn from each of those churches. But I believe in a certainty, if you look it back and trace it over time, that those churches are a timeline of how the church has progressed over time. And I can prove that with scripture if you want to talk about it at the church. I believe it's a timeline. And I believe we're living uh, in one of those last churches when he talks about Laodicea and a lukewarm church. And Jesus said, you hear me? I said, Jesus said. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Oh, Jesus said. I'd rather you be cold or hot. If you're lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. In other words, I'd rather you be all the way in or all the way out. This fence riding junk will not work. Oh yes, come to church on Sunday and lift your hands and cry a tear but you're cussing on Monday. That will not work. Oh yes, come to church and lift your hands but you're watching ungodly things out there on the TV. That will not work. You do it in here. You act right in here but you go out there and have a bad attitude. That will not work. Either get in or get out but get saved and get on fire for God hallelujah praise God lukewarm luke cold or lukewarm cold and hot my pastor preached a series of sermons one time and I'll, I'm going to preach it if, if Lord help me and lead me that way well, I'm going to preach it and in one of his messages he said having the wrong religion is just as bad as having no religion I'm not here to make some mama sad tonight. But could I tell you, if you truly believe that holiness is the right way and that salvation through Jesus Christ is the right way, your children will not prosper in some of the church who preaches another doctrine. You can smile at them on Mother's Day if you want to. You can pat them on the back on Easter if you want to. But the wrong religion is just as bad as no religion. Oh, yes, come on here now. I know that's hard to swallow for some of us because we know good and well. But it's still salvation by grace through faith. Not a works lest any man should boast. It's not a Catholic religion. Oh, no, it's not a Baptist religion. It's not Methodist. Oh, it's not Church of God. It's holiness. And it's Christianity. And it's living the word. I said it's living the word of God. It amazes me. And I was talking to Sister Stephanie just to, uh, just, uh, I think we're headed to lunch. We got lost, praise God. Imagine that. And it wasn't her fault. Hallelujah. And no, I didn't ask for directions. I Google directions, praise God. Sister Smith said, we're going to such and such place. And I said, okay. And she said, you know how to get there? And I thought I did, Sister Smith. I didn't mean to lie to you. I promise I didn't. I'm sorry. I really am. I'm so sorry. And I got your phone call, but it was on silent. I didn't get it until I was in the restaurant. She's worried about that preacher, praise God. She's prayed he done went back to Moultrie. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not yet. Give me a few minutes, praise God. Oh, yes. Uh, but we was headed there, and uh, I told Sister Stephanie, I said, uh, it amazes me how every individual church is so different in how they respond to the word of God. And even in churches, Brother David, it's easy to see 
how different sections in the congregation respond to what you say. It's amazing to me. You ought to stand up here sometime and see what I see. It's amazing. You get on this. Woo! Praise God. Hallelujah. Preacher, brother. Mm, mm, mm. You get on this. Uh huh. Help him, Lord. And you get back on once you walk a while ago. Woo! Preacher, hallelujah. Praise God. Preacher, woo! Glory, hallelujah. God. And get back on that. Mm, amen. I think I got to go to the restroom. I don't feel bad if you gotta go to the restroom right now. If you need to go, go ahead. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But that's the way we respond. So we respond. Let me get to my message. Okay, if I get my message tonight, you still got it open because you've been waiting on me to get back to it, hadn't you? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's get back to Second Kings here for just a minute. Spiritual snowflakes don't be one. Amen. Yeah. Let me talk to you about a spiritual snowflake right here that's in the Word of God. Here you have a man who's trying to do the will of God, trying to build a house they want to work, serve God in. That's got to be the will of God. You got a man of God with a man of God. Woo! Hey, Amen. You got unity. I said you got unity. I told you this morning, unity will make or break a church. And I meant it. I've seen a terrorist church apart. I've seen church grow to over 500 because of unity. Mm. Woo! I love unity. I love it so good, I believe in living it. I love it so good, I preach it. Amen. When me and that loving little lady right there are not in unity, you can tell it. It affects our lives, our spiritual lives, our relationship with each other, and everybody around us. I told you I learned a lot in about 30 days. Oh, yes, because I've already been praying about this thing. Because we got to be on one page. Oh, yes, the day of Pentecost couldn't come until they were all in one accord in one place. We used to say in one mind and one accord, but that's not King James Version. But it's still the same thing, in one accord and one place. Pentecost can't come, y'all. You hear me right here? Pentecost can't come. Revival can't come. Things can't can't take place unless we're unified. I'm getting there. Hang on. I'm still preaching on polished handles. Oh, yes. You see these men of God and these fellas here. Can I borrow one of your canes, brother? I'm going to borrow one of his canes right here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Here it is right here. Uh, this is a cane, a walking stick. Everybody got this? Praise the Lord. It's pretty steady. Praise God. But imagine this is an axe. That's a big axe. Praise the Lord. That's a big axe. Yeah. But anyways, here it is. I borrowed it, brother. Is that all right? Praise God. And that brother, he's in the fire of God. And he's in the will of God. That cutting edge, they're doing a good thing. They're being good stewards. They're swinging that axe, doing what they're supposed to do. They're using the edge of that axe for the word of God and the will of God. Everything else around them, all those tools, all those men, all that sweat running off their brow like it's running off mine right now. Come on, sweat. All that. Thank you. 
The Spirit of God makes a difference in our church services. The pointy part that makes a difference. The things that make a difference in our lives. Everything else is just there. Everything else is menial. But the axe head is priceless. Somebody say amen right there. The axe head is priceless. Oh yes, it's cutting. It's transforming. It's working. But all of a sudden, it's gone. It flies off. The grip is lost. And the power is gone. Oh yes. But could I tell you right here, the young man really realizes something. His swing is of no value unless he has the axe head. Oh yes, your attempts are futile unless you have the spirit of God. Your efforts are silly unless you've got the power. Your worship is meaningless without God's approval. Oh yes, the preacher could have looked around and he could have said, you know what? That one's gone. We still got a pretty nice axe handle here. Man, isn't that thing pretty? Probably wooden, you know. Probably made out of some kind of nice wood. Some oak, maybe. What are axe handles made out of? I don't know. Hickory. Hickory, all right. Some nice hickory. You know, it sure is nice. I could take that piece of wood. I wish I had an axe handle now. I'd show you what it really looks like. Take that piece of wood. I could take some varnish, and I could make it real nice looking. Real pretty piece of wood, you know. It has those nice grooves and, and curves where I can just hold it just like it's supposed to be held. It conforms. Oh, come on. See, I said, you know where I'm going. It conforms to my hand. Oh, it looks so good. Everybody says, man, what a nice axe handle you got. Oh, man, what a nice form that thing has. What a nice swing that thing has. Man, you could swing that all day. Oh, but it's missing something. You hear me? Oh, come on here now. I said it's missing something. Oh, it's missing something. And in the house of God, in this modern day holiness church, church. We got a lot of people sitting around and they're holding axe handles and they're saying, look at this form. Look at this fashion. Look at this what I've got. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. Look at this dress code. Look at my faithfulness. Look at my good works. Look at my daily prayer. Look at my sweet song. But where's the blade? I said, where's the blade? Where's the head? Where's that which makes a difference? Oh, yes. Churches are full of Pollock's axe handles. What can I tell you right here? We've got to have the head. We've got to have the axe. We've got to have the spirit moving on the inside of our hearts. You have the interpretation. What does it matter if I did? What is the axe head right here amongst you? Was it where the axe head right here amongst you? You question the spirit? No. I'm telling you right here, this is the point right here. Where is the axe head? 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 Where is the
Ghost. Oh, yes. Yeah, so where's the cutting edge? Where's it at? Where's the move? Where's the prayer warrior that said, I'll pray until something moves? And I'll take on that coat that he left behind. I'll take on the mail that he left behind. Where's the preacher? Where's the singer? Oh, yes. Where's the interpretation act? But I tell you right here, we ought to listen to the word of God and it speaks to our heart. We got a lot of pretty handles. We got a lot of good dress codes. We got a lot of good ideas and good songs. But without the Spirit of God, I tell them, I said, without the Spirit of God, without the option of the Holy Ghost, we are not there. Jesus. Uh, I said in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh, yes, for the value of man and nobody but the devil. Uh, because we have so many people uh, who desire uh, just to have good axe handles. Uh, but I tell you, uh, Lord, give me the increase uh, of the spirit of power. Uh, Lord, give me the increase uh, of the axe handles. Yeda saith God, I am grieved this night. I am grieved with my people, saith God. For thou art my people. Thou art my blessing. Yea, I say unto thee that this night my word hath gone forth. And I say unto thee that thou needest listen to my word. Thou canst do this by thyself. You need me, saith God. My spirit dwells with thee. My spirit speaks to thee, saith God. And you listen. However, thou needest more than to listen, saith God. Action needeth to take place. Things need to be done. Therefore I say unto thee, saith God tonight, Thou art my children, but there is a place beside me, saith God, that thou canst come because of thy lack of obedience in the house of God. Yea, thus saith God, if thou wilt obey me, thus saith God, if thou wilt turn thy ear unto me and thy heart also, if thou wilt turn to me, saith God, I will bless thee. I will restore the things that have gone down. I will bring up the things that have fallen. I will bless thee in the time of trouble. And I will strengthen thee in the time of need. I will provide for you in a time of famine. But thou must trust me. Thou must do my will. And thou must obey me when I speak unto thee, saith God. <laughs> Blessed is the man that hears my word tonight, saith God. Blessed is he who turns his heart towards me. Blessed is the one who hears the voice of God tonight and responds. Blessed is he. Cursed is he who walks out. Cursed is he who turns a deaf ear to the word of God tonight. Cursed is he, but blessed is the one who obeys. Blessed is the one who adheres to my spirit tonight, saith God. Blessed is he who trusts in my word. Blessed is he who has faith in my doctrine and my will. Blessed is he, saith God. <laughs> Covet not what those things that thou hast seen in this world, saith God. They are full of fire and judgment. Covet not what thou hast seen other doctrines perform. Covet not what other preachers, pastors, other churches have brought before thine eyes. Covet thou the good things of the wholeness of my, of my spirit. Covet thou the good things that I have given thee. 
Covet thou to hear the word of God in the, in the midst of you. Covet thou to do my will and do the will that I have given unto thee tonight, saith God. And I will bless thee. Harden not your heart, saith God. Harden not your heart. You're asking yourself right now why the Holy Ghost is speaking so strong. And I tell you, it's because He loves you. There are churches that when men get all the money they have in their treasury to hear the Word of God tonight. And the Holy Ghost is so free to work right here amongst us. And so free to speak to us. This is not a reproof unto you necessarily. It's a reproof unto us as a people to say we have got to step to the plate and continue what God has started in our lives. Yeah. Holy Ghost, I give you all birds. The Holy Ghost has blessed you. The Spirit of God's come amongst you. There's freedom in worship. There's freedom in praise. There's a move of the Spirit of God amongst you. For some reason, God has favored this people. It is the faithfulness of your heart to the faithfulness of others to the prayers, no doubt. But can I tell you, don't be frivolous to what God puts you here. Every one of you God puts you here. You hear me? Every one of you God puts you here. And we ought to do our best to be more than just polished. We're going to do our best to obey God in every part. If you sit, you will die. Do you believe me? If you sit, you will die. Do you believe me? If you sit, you know what I'm talking about? You will spiritually die. Dad and I are going out. Just let me go. I don't really know how to go from here because the Holy Ghost has said so much. And don't ask me what the Holy Ghost says because I don't remember when the Holy Ghost speaks. It's just like that. that you, you don't remember it. My pastor does the same thing, but I tell you right here. He said, Blessed are you who obey my word. And cursed are you who turn a deaf ear to it. So now the Holy Ghost just reminds us of what his word already says. And I tell you right here. I want every one of you to be blessed. Brother Dallin didn't come with hellfire, brimstone, cursing you. No, don't you believe that one bit. The Holy Ghost speaks to our hearts and touches our lives and speaks unto us because he wants us to respond to his word. Axe handles. They're everywhere. But where is the axe? I got you on your feet for just a minute, but let me finish this out for just a quick second. The Bible says the man of God the preacher who lost the axe handle turned to the man of God and he said I need some help and together he said where'd you drop it at and together they recovered and I don't believe that brother took that axe head and just you know kind of walked off with it I believe he went over there he put it back on that axe and he went back to work Some of you, it's not your fault. It's not, some of you, it's not your fault the axe handle's gone. You're not the one who lost it. Some of you are too young. Some of you are too uh, inexperienced in the spiritual aspects. But about the Holiness Church, we can't afford to lose that axe. And if we have lost it in our own individual lives or as a group, we cannot afford to let it continue to be lost. We've got to find the move of the Spirit. Brother Dallin, what do you want out of Bethel Holiness Church? I want what God wants. You hear me? Brother Dallin, you sound like you set something so high, specter so high. No, 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 no. It's not Brother Dallin setting the specter. It's not Brother Dallin, excuse me, brother. It's not Brother Dallin setting these things out. It's the Holy Ghost. And I have a feeling I'm not only one, the only one preaching these types of messages. I have a feeling. Just a little hunch. I have a feeling the Holy Ghost has been speaking some very similar things. Right here. When I'm not here. I'm, I'm seeing some nodding heads. Yeah. So it's up to us to respond. Sister Steph is going to begin to play softly. Every head bowed here this, this afternoon or tonight. Don't you worry about the time. We may have the longest to drive out of anybody. Maybe. I don't know. Don't you worry about the time. 
Holy Ghost said a lot right here. You may remember some of it. You may not remember all of it. I want you to put emphasis on the Spirit of God when He comes into a service. And I want you to know the Lord said He'll bless you for obeying His will. He said His Spirit is what makes a difference in your life. And He wants to transform you. And without any more eloquent words from me, because I don't have any to begin with. Bethel, don't lose the axe. Mama, Daddy, don't lose the axe. Grandma, Grandpa, don't lose the axe. Some of you are crying bitter tears, and some of you, your mind's so far from the service, you don't even know really what I'm saying right now. That's the mind of the devil. Don't lose your focus on what God's trying to do right here. Come, if you will, everyone who can. Let's fill these altars tonight. Let's pray for a little while. That's all I know to say. Let's pray. Let's pray. Bethel, the Lord's wanting to help you in more ways than you understand, I feel like. I feel like God is preparing some things for you that you have yet to see come to fruition. I feel like the Lord's got a man out there for you and a plan out there for you. But right now, right now, I don't want to be an axe handle. Right now, I want the Spirit of God to move on me in such a way, Lord, that I am unified with my brothers. I am unified with my sisters. And that the Spirit of God can bless me and put His hand upon me and put His mouth in me and put His Spirit upon me and put His anointing on my heart and on my life. Oh, come on, sisters. Come on, daughters of Zion. Come on, men. Come on, sons of the cross. Come on, people of God. Come on, Bethel Holiness Church. Come on, Christians. Come on, brothers and sisters of the body of Christ. Come on, let's pray. Let's call on God. Let's ask God to help us. Let's ask God to help us.